wanna in a fake what I'm gonna You can hate all you wanna but you're still in your pajama Now I ain't a prima donna but I built what I wanna Wanna You can say my vision's wrong The tune of my song Broke my thumb Bang into my own drum Broke my thumb Bang into my own drum Broke my thumb Bang into my own drum Who in a clapping Boots I am a strapping A click click clacking Hurrah Bootstrapping in America Yeah bootstrapping in America Thomas, we're back, my friend, bootstrapping in America. And I hope we're going to be able to pull this off with uh, today's modern technology. But let's give it a let's give it a whirl. Vitalik, how are you? Uh, good. How are you? Uh, very good. I'm just waiting till you get a picture. Am I going to see him? Awesome. There, there you go. go. Welcome. How are you? Uh, good. Glad to be on here. How are you? Thank you for coming on Tasty Trade today. We're looking forward to having a short discussion with you about um, virtual currencies. It's uh, um, the concept is, or, or the um, there's been an explosion of information, an explosion of yes. IP with respect to virtual currency. Talk to us about. Uh, you're 19 years old, right? Well, actually, 20 now, as of about uh, oh, oh, two weeks ago. Happy birthday! Close <laughs> enough, right? Happy birthday. Um, and I've read a lot about your background and talk to us about the project that you're working on so people can get some, um, just a, a little bit of history on you. Okay. So, well, the project that I'm working on right now, it's called Ethereum. Uh, the idea with, with Ethereum is that it, there's been a lot of interest in these sort of, uh, Bitcoin 2.0 te technologies in the past year or so. So for about five years now, we've had Bitcoin and we've had these sort of new virtual currencies, but now people are already looking into what can we, what else can we do with Bitcoin? You know, can we use Bitcoin for more than just money? So there's been a lot of different projects in that area. There's been something called Covered Coins. There's something called MasterCoin, Counterparty, and uh, uh, dozens of others. And uh, Ethereum is sort of in the, in the same theme as, as those, pro those projects. So it tries to use Bitcoin same cryptographic infrastructure to let you do various kinds of uh, financial contracts, peer-to-peer -peer -peer networking protocols, and and so forth. And the idea is, is that what makes Ethereum unique is that it has its own built-in programming language. So you can so you can build pretty much whatever you want inside of it. It's sort of like the same thing that JavaScript does for your web browser. So, for example, we use JavaScript to build Gmail, to build Facebook, and, and so forth. Uh, in Ethereum, you can use Ethereum's programming language to build pretty much any kind of uh, financial contracts, peer-to-peer -peer protocol, auton autonomous agents that you, that you can think of. Let's let's um, let's take a step back for just a second. And um, Ethereum is you are the you are the kind of creator of that, aren't you? Yes. And so, so I'm. I, I've read about. I, I think there's about 50 different virtual currencies. I think about 50. Right? Is that fair? Over 100. Over 100 now. Okay. So I don't even know. Uh, Tony and I just bought our first Bitcoin um, about three weeks ago. A little bit longer, yeah. Yeah, maybe a month ago, mm -hmm. we bought our first Bitcoin, so we wanted to get involved in just in just a better. Um, for us, it was important to have a, a just a very different understanding of the space. Um, are you current? I, I I read that you were. Um, um, I'm not sure if you were the you co-founded Bitcoin Magazine. When yes. did you start? How old were you when you started? Just kind of dabbling in Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah, I just was, dabbling in the whole so, thing or, or mining for well, Bitcoins. That was March 2011. I was 17 at the time. So at first, they started off uh, basically just writing articles for uh, for a blog that that's called Bitcoin Weekly. I was paid five bitcoins an article for that, which back then was about four dollars. And then I yeah, co-founded Bitcoin Magazine when I was 17, and that's been uh, one of my main main essentially jobs ever since. And you just did you get like was it the fascination with the with developing the concept the algorithms or was it the fascination with just creating another kind of um, uh, another kind of currency? So in other words, was it kind of like a big globe? Like like what fascinated you about this? Like I'm trying to figure out like how a 17 year old you know kind of bites on this and then just you know decides hey you know what I could do this I could build my own currency. Yeah, well, it was uh, somewhat both both of those things. So, I like I was really attracted by the fact that Bitcoin is a sort of a, 
money that's completely under your control. So it's so back when I got my first five bitcoins, I realized that it's basically just this. There was this file on my on my computer, and there was this and there was a computer network, and there was really nothing else. Like there wasn't any kind of, any kind of like website institution or bank between between me and the system. It's something that I could control directly. So I think it, like a lot of people, I think are attract are attracted to having some kind of uh, money that they that they can touch, that they that they can handle direct, they can handle directly. You know, well, that's to, that's for sure. Yeah. But it's really even cooler yeah, when you can build your own currency and have your own money. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And, and, and and that's, so even, that's, the, that's the thing, right? With Bitcoin, I sort of feel the same way. It's like money that I can handle directly, except with a command line. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. just awesome. So where are you right now in the, and take us through, walk walk Tony and I through some of the, um, some of the most, some of the differentiating pieces of building your own virtual currency, and then some of the things, um, why is your current, why would I use your currency? Okay, yeah, so I'll just uh, start off by talking in more detail about this uh, idea of Bitcoin 2.0. So this is something that people have been really interested in slightly starting 2012, more so in 2013. So there was this idea, for example, called colored coins. So the idea with colored coins is that, hey, with Bitcoin, you can have one currency on this uh, decentralized network. Well, with colored coins, let's have thousands of currencies all inside of the same network. So you can issue your own currency. So for example, if you're a bank, then you might want to issue a, a colored coin currency that's actually backed by US dollars. You can have a colored coin currency that's backed by gold. You can have a colored coin currency that actually is shares in your company. So, believe me, we've thought step. about it here for Tasty Coins. Correct. The the idea yeah. has the idea has, but but mm -hmm. I, I'm still like I still don't understand how the how any of this is truly transactional or truly adoptable outside of it being just more of like a game. Like, like in other words, I can kind of, I can kind of see um, a transactional application, a functional transactional application for Bitcoin because it's first to market. But I don't see how a consumer can differentiate between, you know, a hundred different virtual currencies. And especially yeah. when none of them, I don't really understand the fungibility yeah. or the clearing mechanism for a for hundred different currencies. Right. So the idea there is that we're really not talking so much about Bitcoin as a currency. We're really talking more about Bitcoin as a technology and a platform. And that's what right. You can do with it. So with colored coins, for example, so if you have a colored coin that's, say, backed by U.S. dollars, that's that has a lot of benefits because, first of all, Bitcoin has, is extremely easy to work with. You don't need any kind of account. Like, you set, like setting up a, a Bitcoin wallet only takes a few minutes. There's pretty much no, no barriers to entry, no transaction fees, you know, all the things that we like about Bitcoin. And yet its value is as stable as a U.S. dollar. So and that's just one application of a, of a, of a colored coin. So so what we're really talking about here is so is this idea of, of colored coins as a whole, right? That's sort of one way of moving to the next level. Yeah, that that so part not, of it, that part of it we get. That's interesting. But, yeah, but with with um, uh, with Ethereum. What's yeah, so the, a, you know, right. what, so what are you Ethereum, thinking, like, where, where can you go with this? Okay, yeah, so I'm just, uh, like, the thing here is that Ethereum is sort of like the culmination of a really long, a really long chain uh, of ideas, so I have to, so I do want to, like, go through at least some of them, so, to, like, to get, to give people an idea of why it was, why it was created, what the, what the need for it is. So after colored coins, the next idea that there was is master coin. And MasterCoin is this protocol where you can also, it's also a protocol that's sort of on top of Bitcoin, but you can have your own currencies in MasterCoin, it's just like colored coins, but you can also do financial contracts, you can do a decentralized exchange, you, it has all sorts of these advanced features. So now what Ethereum does is that Ethereum says, well, why not, instead of having a protocol with, with lots of different features, with like 30 different things that you can do with it, Let's have a currency with a built-in programming language. And if you do that, then there's basically infinity of different things you can do with it. Because anything that you might want to do, you can just write it in, write it in code. Got it. So if I wanted to write whatever, if I wanted to write some really complicated financial contract, I, 
that has like five different clauses, gives gives five hundred dollars to X under these under these conditions, gives six hundred plus Y dollars under those conditions, and so forth. I could just write it in code, and then the co the contract would sort of enforce itself. So so I've read a bunch of stuff about you know um, about interest in your project. Where have you seen who's approached you? Just I'm just curious, like you know who's approached you and said, "Hey, this is really cool. I want to commit capital to it. I want to I want to help you build it." Or is this pretty much? Are you still an outlier? It's there has been a lot of interest. So I think there has been a, a large amount of interest from people in the Bitcoin space. So there, like some of these other. Bitcoin 2.0 protocols, things like Colored Coins, things like Mastercoin. There is a huge invest investor community behind them. There's a lot of people that think that, you know, Bitcoin 2.0 is the future is the future of Bitcoin, much like Web 2.0 is the future of the internet. So they're saying, so they think that Ethereum looks looks promising too, and uh, they're and they want to put money into it. Okay, and so also, so talk to me about you for a little bit. You're you're just turned 20 years old. Um, I read somewhere where you just dropped out of the uni university. Um, I'm not sure what school you were going to to Waterloo. work on this full time. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. Well, I dropped out of uh, Waterloo back in April to work on Bitcoin full time, and then Ethereum. I started working in November. Okay. So, so what's your game plan? Your personal game plan? Because I'm fat. What What interests us is everybody watching this today is a is a do it yourself investor, self directed do it yourself investor. And what's interesting to people to see, hey, you know what? What makes this kid tick? What, what he's 19 years old. He's taking his. You're taking a shot. Of course, you can recover. There's no. I don't view this as having any risk to you other than you know just resource risk, and you can always get that back. Time. In your, your time. You're you're plenty young enough. Um, is is this your um, can you can you actually monetize this or is this yeah. just a vision? No, it's we're building it. I mean, the nice thing about currencies is that you actually can you actually can monetize them. Like you can say we're going to get when when you're creating your own currency, you can basically say we're going to conjure up a hundred thousand units of this currency and we're going to hand it out to people who help develop it. So. So if I wanted to, if I wanted to dig down into this, into this coin right now, into this, into this currency, this coin, how would I do it? Well, all depends on what you wanted to do. Like this, like if you wanted to. Let's just say yeah, I wanted to inventory it. Let's say I want to say, hey, you know what? This, this, I, I watch this kid on your show. I like this Vitalik kid. And do you go Vitalik or Vitali? Vitalik. Vitalik. So I like this Vitalik, and I find him really interesting. And I want to take, I want to bet on him, because we're in the world of this is it's almost like crowdfunding, social, you know, social sourcing right now. So, so I'd like to bet on him. I'd like to buy some of these. I'd like to yeah. buy something. What do I do? Yeah. Well, well, we are going to have, uh, and so at some point next month, we're hoping we're going to have an oppor an opportunity for people to essentially pre pre-order some of these ether or ether is uh, ethereum's internal currency so you're calling it you're calling it ethers yeah well ether how do you yeah, spell that it's e-t-h-e-r okay like yeah like that void up in the sky so right. it's uh yeah so we're basically be selling them at a, pr at a price of uh 1000 to 2000 ether for our bitcoin so you're gonna the currency is only going to be exchangeable for bitcoin um, at the st at the start, likely, like we do have plans for partnerships with uh, some different exchanges. We, as as soon as Ethereum actually launches, we're hoping to have the ability to exchange it directly for dollars and euros and Swiss and Swiss francs and uh, Jenny and Rudman be right out out the door. But it's at this point we're thinking of Bitcoin as a sort of easier starting point. I love that. Too. It's almost, like, it's almost like the reverse, right? I mean, the reverse takes, split. Right, right. right. <laughs> well, just going back to, you know, you, you, you essentially set your camp and where you're going to make your who you're going to bet on and 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 things like that. But I think I think for 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 us for the consumer that um, that's just interested in kind of what you guys are doing in the space, it's very difficult to decide like where do we spend our money. Correct. Yes. 
Correct. You know, because essentially we're not betting on we're betting on the we're betting on his ability to build a business. We're not necessarily at this point, you know, betting on a currency um, in the sense we're not using it as transactional currency. Correct. Yeah. What what kind of safeguards are in place with with the currency that you're building that would maybe um, lessen some of the concerns that a lot of people have about you know Bitcoin? Well, I, well, a lot of the same a lot of the same concern concerns that exist with Bitcoin do also uh, also apply here. Like it's it's a cryptocurrency. It's it's volatile. It has there are issues with securing it and so forth. But I think what we're really so I think the answer to that is uh, two things. So uh, first of all, well, yes, yes, there is a risk that. We're going to we're going to completely fail, and for some reason, Ethereum is going to going to turn going to turn out to be impossible. I think that's just a risk that you uh, all, of course that you of course. always that you always take when you're participating in any kind of like pre-order fundraiser or whatever. But then once Ethereum gets gets released, so some of its advanced some of its advanced uh, scripting features do actually help actually uh, help a lot in terms of solving some of Bitcoin's problems. So, for example, a lot of people talk about the security issue. Like, there's lots of stories about, oh, I got hacked and I lost and I lost thirty thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin. So, our our scripting system actually allows allows for a lot of interesting possibilities in uh, in improving that situation. Vitalik, thank you so much for coming on the show today. That was really interesting, and. Um we wish you the best of luck. I just hope Tony doesn't um, steal your idea and start his own currency. <laughs> <laughs> I think they'll follow yours more than they'll follow mine. out there. Feel free. <laughs> no. He likes the competition. Of course, of course. <laughs> well, we're definitely going to be watching it. What, what's the? Um, I saw the video last night, but what's the? When's the launch date? Uh, we don't want to commit to a launch date yet, just because. Like if you look at every other every other software company that's committed that's committed to a launch date has always and pretty much ended up pushing it back. Right. So we'd really rather not. Make so if somebody it. wants to learn more, where do they go? Ethereum.org. Ethereum.org. And then when you go to Ethereum.org, what's on there? Just a video. At the a videos, a few links to some other resources, forum, blog, white paper, wiki. Correct. Also has your founders on there and what it is. Yeah. It's a good description. Yeah. No, no. I, I watched the video mm -hmm. yesterday. Mm -hmm. Vitalik, thank you so much. No. You're welcome. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good interview. Got some good feedback already from people on there. Um, we're going to take about a... So, so if you if you watch this video... Um, it's pretty amazing. He took time off to travel the world and learn about other currencies. I mean, other virtual currencies. It's pretty amazing what he's done. Well, there is... Um, only because, you know, I've had the experience of my own 20-year-old. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure. <laughs> Which is, Dad, um, how do you put air in the currency? <laughs> how do you put air in the football type thing to, um, um, I, I, I just, I wonder about, I, I just wonder about, like, you know. Um, Finish your thoughts. I, I wonder about all the different I wonder about virtual currency because I think it's cool as hell mm -hmm. and I think it's really fascinating but I also have like all these crazy questions is it ever going to be liquid enough well you're over 40 years old you're supposed to No, no is it things. ever going to be liquid enough like of like course. is there ever going to be enough liquidity for you or I to actually use any of this stuff outside of like gaming or to use it to buy the next virtual currency like like you can take your Virtual your Bitcoin and convert it to Ethereum coins, and now you've gone from one to two thousand. Sure. Now your bet there is that these guys are going to make it, and then sure. can you turn that two thousand Ethereum coins into you know eighty thousand other? You know what I'm saying? There's there's always going to be this. It's I'm not sure. It's not a pyramid game, but I just don't know if it. You know if you're ever going to use it for anything else. I understand. Like you're not going to go and who was the guy we had on the here yesterday, the, the um, flowerbloom.com, was it? Mm -hmm. um, you're not going to go take your Bitcoin and use $49 for to buy flowers. Correct. Okay, you're going to take your Bitcoin, which becomes a much more speculative. But again, there's no, there's no liquidity in that speculation. So you can take your Bitcoin and you can buy Ethereum coins, mm -hmm. but you can't take Ethereum coins and turn it into cash. Right, right. <laughs> Nobody's going to clear that trade. Right. No, so you it. just roll, you know... 
I got it, and you're rolling with everything, but you're you're um, all right. You good? Yeah, it's just going to take me a while to, to figure it all out. Wrap your yes. head around it? Yes. Be back in about uh, 90 seconds. We got good trade, bad trade next. You'll listen to Taste Trade Live.